I'm being very foolish. He will kill me for this, just as he killed Stein. Kiss me. Is he in there? Yes. Who else? Nobody else, except Mavis. He will kill her too. Listen. Kiss me again. I have not long to live, amigo. When you are the finger for a man like that, you die young. What a friend I would make if I pulled this trigger. With Stein, it did not matter. I would have killed him myself gladly, that filth. To die is not much. To kill is not much. But to entice people to their death. Mavis took him away from me, but I did not want to kill her. The world is full of men who have enough money. He seems like a nice little guy. <laughs> of course he does. That is why he is what he is. You think you are tough, amigo. You are a very soft peach compared with Steelgrave. He has killed a dozen men with a smile for each one. I have known him for a long time. I knew him in Cleveland. With ice picks? If I give you the gun, will you kill him for me? Would you believe me if I promised? Yes. I'd kill him if I had to. Good night, amigo. I wear black because I am beautiful and wicked and lost. That is pretty good in there, no? 32 caliber with a white bone grip. Two less than a full load. It had been fired, twice perhaps. Orin Quest had been shot twice. The two shells I picked up on the floor were 32 caliber, and before, in room 332 of the Hotel Van Nuys, a blonde girl with a towel in front of her face had pointed a 32 caliber automatic at me with a white bone grip. You can get too fancy about these things. You can also not get fancy enough. I didn't think the door would be unlocked for my convenience, so I prowled around until I found a door under the wooden steps to the service entrance. I could just make out some long, shadowed tables that told me the boys downtown had been right about that gambling rap. Tigers could be in the darkness watching me, or guys with large guns, or nothing and too much imagination in the wrong place. Hello? Anybody here needing a detective? Hello, yourself. I think you came too late. Too late for what? Too late to be shot. I've been looking forward to it all evening. Miss Gonzalez brought me. Where's Steelgrave? You ought to be glad wherever he is. He had to kill you. Or thought he had. You wanted me here, didn't you? Were you that fond of him? I must have been, once. Yes, I liked him a lot. And in the end, I liked him with this. Try that chair by the window. I went over there, walking in low gear. No blood moved in him, and very little had stained his jacket. The bullet had been fired by someone who knew where the heart was. What did you expect me to do? He killed my brother. Someone had to, and quick. How long have you known the photographs existed? Weeks. Nearly three months. I got one in the mail a couple of days after... After Stein was killed. Did you think Steel Grave had killed Stein? No. Why should I? What happened after you got the photo? My brother Oren called me up and said he'd lost his job and was broke. He wanted money. He didn't say anything about the photo. He didn't have to. There was only one time it could have been taken. Then what? More prints of the photo? One every week. I showed them to him. He didn't like it. I didn't tell him about Oren. I suppose he must have found out. But not where Oren was hiding out. When did you tell him? I told him today. Please, don't ask me a lot of useless questions. There's nothing you can do. All right. He killed my brother. It's going to take a lot of money to fix this. I don't have a lot of money, so that's out. That puts it up to me, then. Steelgrave was dead. Nothing could change that. If I believed that Mavis didn't kill him, I'd work something out to protect her. But if I believed she was guilty, I'd call in the police. All right, get going. You can't get away with it. You're my client. Don't stall. But I killed him. Why should you be dragged into it? I can't hear a word you say. She seemed hardly to breathe. Then she turned abruptly and walked away. I waited for her to look back. Chateau Bercy. Dolores Gonzalez, please. When she answered, I could almost hear her breath catch. Not quite. She claimed that Steelgrave had tried to ditch the gun on her earlier that night. I told her to forget I had called and went back to Steelgrave. I took out the gun Dolores had given me and wiped it off and put his limp hand around the butt, held it there and let go. 
That left me with two guns. There was a weapon in his holster that I took out and put it under a counter wrapped in a towel. The other white-handled automatic was left. I fired two shots that nicked peacefully into the wall. I couldn't tell whether the big muscle on the side of his neck had begun to sat or not, but his skin was colder than it had been. There was not a hell of a lot of time to play around with. Dead, wouldn't you say? Fingerprints in all the right places? I hope. You here when he got it, Marlowe? No. A girl I know called me this evening and said a client of mine was in danger up here. From him? Someone with a name? Dolores Gonzalez. Chateau Bercy apartment. On Franklin. She's in pictures. Oh, oh. Who's your client? Same one? No. This is another party altogether. Have a name? There has to be some agreement about publicity. The DA ought to be willing. You don't know the DA good, Marlowe. She hasn't any name. There are a dozen ways we can find out, kid. Why go into this routine that makes it tough for all of us? Damn it, this man killed Orrin Quest. You take that gun downtown and check it against the bullets in Quest. Give me that much, at least. I wouldn't give you the dirty end of a burnt match. I won't lie to you, and I won't tell you anything except on the terms I stated. Put the cuffs on him, Fred. Behind. He's under arrest. Ten hours and a pot of bitter black coffee later, and I felt like the box of shavings the cat had kittens in. The good Dr. Ligardi had disappeared, but they did find out that I had been right on the Cleveland angle. I hated it to be that tidy. Orrin Quest wants to put the bite on Steelgrave, so he just by pure accident runs into the one guy in Bay City that can prove who Steelgrave was. But when that photo was taken, Stein hadn't been squibbed off. Somebody had to tell him. In any event, it seemed to be a dead issue. Clawson and Mile Away Marsden both had records. Orrin Quest was dead, and the police weren't going to drag his family through the mud just to prove they could solve a case. They told me not to leave town, and I went back to the office. You're in a bad spot, Marlowe. You've been caught suppressing evidence helpful to the solution of a murder. That is obstructing justice. You could go up for it. What evidence? Just a moment. Is that photo the evidence Mr. Marlowe was supposed to have suppressed? As Miss Wells' attorney, I'd like to point out that that photo isn't evidence of anything. Mr. Farrell, I'll ask the questions. Miss Wells, are you prepared to take the stand and swear as to the time and place when this photograph was taken? No, Mr. Endicott, I couldn't. I didn't know it was being taken. All you have to do is look at it. 
I've had lots of photos taken of me, Mr. Endicott. In a lot of different places and with a lot of different people. Somebody shot Steelgrave to death last night. It could have been anybody. It could even have been Miss Weld. I'm sorry to say that, but it seems to be in the cards. Well, let's assume a proceeding, one in which that photo was part of your evidence, if you can even get it in. But you can't. Miss Weld won't get it in for you. You'd have to connect it up with a witness who could swear as to where, how, and when it was taken. The only man who could connect it up is the man who took it. I understand he's dead. This photo is clear evidence of itself that at a certain time and place, Steelgrave was not in jail and therefore had no alibi for the killing of Stein. It proves nothing whatsoever. And if that's the evidence Marlowe suppressed, then he didn't, in a legal sense, suppress evidence at all. I wasn't thinking of trying Steelgrave for murder, but I am a little interested in who killed him. Are you sure he was murdered? I understand two guns were found, both the property of Steelgrave. One of these guns had killed Quest and also Stein. The other had killed Steelgrave. Fired at close quarters, too. I admit those boys don't, as a rule, take that way out, but it could happen. No doubt. Thanks for the suggestion. It happens to be wrong. Miss Weld, it is my duty to determine whether anyone should be brought to trial for any of these murders and to prosecute them. There is not much point in my asking you whether you shot Steelgrave, but I do ask you whether you have any knowledge that would point to who may have killed him. Knowledge, not mere suspicion. No. Well, that will be all for now. Then, Miss Weld, Mr. Farrell, thanks for coming in. You're not exactly proud of the way you've handled things, are you, Marlowe? I got off on the wrong foot. I could make a lot of answers to that. They'd all sound about the same. Thanks for coming in. It's me, Mr. Marlowe. Orpha May Quest. She was right back where she started that first morning. I'm going home. Can you afford it? I can't remember whether I gave you back your $20 or not. Oh, you gave it back to me. I wish you'd tell me what happened to Oren. I'm all confused. I told you. He probably went off the rails. I don't want to go psychological on you, but I figure he was just the type to go very completely haywire. Then there's that awful money hunger that runs in your family. All except one. There's just one question I want to ask you. Was your father married before? Why, yes. Layla had another mother. Tell me some more. After all, I did a lot of work for you, for a very low fee of no dollars net. You got paid, well paid, by Layla. And don't expect me to call her Mavis Weld. Okay. How did Oren find out something about Steelgrave that the cops didn't know? I... I don't know. Could it have been that doctor? Oh, sure. He and Oren got to be friends somehow. Common interest in sharp tools, maybe. She looked at her handbag again. I was beginning to get curious about that bag. Why did Oren call up night before last? He was... He was scared Dr. Lagardi wasn't pleased with him anymore. Something about the pictures. Somebody had taken them from him. Oren didn't know who, but he was scared. I had them. I still have. I... I don't believe you. I'd love to see some of those letters he wrote home. I bet they're meaty. I could make you give the pictures to the police. You could try. Tell me, who tipped off the police that Lagardi knew Clausen? You did. Why? Same reason you hired me, to smoke out your brother who was not cutting you in. You're, you're filthy, you're a little vile. How dare you say such things to me? How much dough did you squeeze out of the deal? You leave my bag alone. Who? Oh, Layla gave me the money. Layla didn't give you that money. Steelgrave gave it to you, because you knew where Oren was, your own brother. You set him up so they could kill him. Layla told him. Layla did it. But she's not the blood money type. A thousand dollars. I hope you're happy with it. I could tell the police. I could tell them a lot of things. They'd believe me. And I could tell them who shot Steelgrave. They might believe me. Who's allowed to prove it? You? Who are you? A cheap shyster. A nobody. Why? Even twenty dollars buys you. What do you expect? I don't have any brothers or sisters to sell out. She stopped dead, frozen in a kind of horror. The light glinted on her glasses. There were no eyes behind them. 
but I knew they were fixed on the little smoldering heap of prints in the ashtray. The cops had driven me to the station where detectives French and Bay The play was over. The curtain was down and projected dimly. I could see the action. But already some of the actors were getting vague and unreal. The little sister above all. That fat little new thousand dollars in her purse. A few people had been killed so she could get it. But I didn't think that would bother her for long. Amigo. Four hours sleep and a couple of drinks and I'd be able to talk nonsense to you again. 
Right now, I've barely enough strength to talk sense. But, Chase, amigo, whatever you wish, come in. Where did you live in Cleveland? Did I say I lived in Cleveland? You said you knew him there. I was married then, yes. What is the matter, amigo? You got to know Steelgrave how. It was just that in those days, it was fun to know a gangster. One went to the places where they were set to go, and if one was lucky, perhaps some evening... What about your husband, or don't you remember? The streets of the world are paved with discarded husbands. Isn't it the truth? You find them everywhere, even in Bay City. Might even be a graduate of the Sorbonne. Might even be mooning away in a measly small town practice. That's a coincidence I'd like to eat. Eh, hey, amigo? You don't use much Spanish, do you? The only thing Mexican about you is a few words and a careful way of talking. I'm in bad trouble downtown. Apparently Miss Weld had the good sense to tell her boss, and he came through. I don't think they think she shot Steelgrave, but they think I know who did. And do you know, amigo? I told Orphame I did. I was there, amigo. The little girl had been staying here with me. She wanted to see Steelgrave's house. She had never seen a gambling house, she said. So I called him up, and he said, come along. When we got there, he put his arm around Orphame and told her she had earned her money well. He said he has something for her. Then he took from his pocket a cloth of some kind and gave it to her. When she unwrapped it, there was a hole in the middle of it, and the hole was stained with blood. Little Orphime took the cloth and then stared at him, and her face was very still. But then she thanked him and opened her bag to put the cloth in it. But instead, she took a gun out of her bag, turned around, and shot him dead with one shot. You made her confess to Mavis Weld, and last night, when you rushed me out there, you already knew he was dead, and there wasn't anything to be afraid of at all. That act with that gun was just an act. Mavis was determined to take the blame. I chased her out. She told me she had shot him. She had the gun. The twin of the one you gave me. I know very little about guns. Sure. Quest was killed with two shots from a thirty-two automatic. Same caliber. I picked up the shells in the den down there. Down where, amigo? Of course, I couldn't know it was the same gun. But it seemed worth trying out. Only confused things up a little. So I switched guns on him. His was a black thirty-eight. He wouldn't carry a thirty-two automatic. And if he killed a man, he would kill him dead. This guy got up and walked a bit. Which guy? I'm afraid I am not following you too well. I'd like to say he talked a bit. But he didn't. His lungs were full of blood. He died at my feet, down there. But down where? You have not told me where it was that this... Do I have to? You were present when little Orphame told him where to go. Only he didn't go. That's what's been the matter all along. Steelgrave was a reformed character and doing fine. When this Stein comes bothering him, wanting to cut in, he has to go. Steelgrave doesn't want to kill anybody, but he has to get rid of Stein, so he gets himself pinched. And he gets out of jail by bribing the jail doctor. And he kills Stein and goes back to jail at once, because the cops will come over and ask questions. Very naturally, I mean. But look at it this way. Why would he have lunch in a public place on the very day he was out of the cooler to knock Stein off? And if he did, why would young Quest happen around to snap that picture? Stein hadn't been killed yet. I like people to be lucky, but that's too lucky. Even if Steelgrave didn't know his picture had been taken, he knew who Quest was. He was Mavis Weld's boyfriend. He must have known something of this brother of hers, which simply adds up to the result that that night of all nights, Steelgrave would not have shot Stein, even if he had planned to. Now it is time for me to ask you... Who did? Somebody who knew Stein and could get close to him. Somebody who already knew that photo had been taken. Knew who Steelgrave was. Knew that Mavis Weld was on the verge of becoming a big star. Knew that her association with Steelgrave was dangerous. Somebody who had met Quest at Mavis Weld's apartment and had given him the works. Somebody who knew those bone-handled 32s were registered to Steelgrave, although he had only bought them to give to a couple of girls. Somebody Stop! Who... You will stop at once, please! I will not tolerate this another minute. You will go now. Why did you kill Quest? For two reasons, amigo. He was more than a little crazy, and in the end he would have killed me. And the other reason is that none of this, absolutely none of it, was for money. It was for love. No matter how many lovers a person may have, there is always one that you cannot bear to lose to another. Steelgrave was the one. That man I would not share. I killed him. <laughs> And you cannot do a damn thing about all this, darling, unless you destroy Mavis Weld utterly. Last night she proved that she was willing to destroy herself. If she was not active. That hurt, did it not? <laughs> <laughs>
Mm -hmm. Why, no, that would be kind of silly. I'd want more than that. Querido, I have liked you very much. It is too bad. As I walked down the hall, I didn't really expect a slug in the back. I thought she'd liked better having me the way I was, not being able to do a damn thing about it. She was one for the books, all right. Utterly beyond the moral laws of this or any world I could imagine. Call the police! They came fast, but not fast enough. When they cracked the door, Dr. Ligardi was sitting on the couch holding her pressed against his heart. He had bitten through his tongue. Perhaps I ought to have stopped him. Perhaps I had a hunch what he would do and deliberately let him do it. Sometimes when I'm low, I try to reason it out, but it gets too damn complicated. The eyes of Miss Dolores Gonzalez were half open, and on her lips there was the dim ghost of a provocative smile. The Hippocrates smile, the ambulance intern said. I guess somebody lost a dream.